Boy, that is pretty great. What a revival is going on. Uh, uh, right after the day of Pentecost and people were being saved and, and, and it's because Peter and John was available they were not ashamed to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ they were not ashamed to be a witness wherever that you could find them boys them men then they would share Jesus folks there's no greater story ever told you know people tell how, how, much, how big a fish they caught how, how big a, the, the deer was how many points it had I mean, folks, they'll brag about their hunting and their fishing, but, but I, I'm here to tell you about Jesus. I'm telling you that Jesus was saved, and, and Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost, and Jesus was baptized, and Jesus will give you more power than all, the, more than you ever need. That Jesus said, I'll walk with you always. I'll go with you until the end of the world. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And I need some that says I'm available. God's looking for people that's available. In Acts chapter 4, 32 it says God gave power and great boldness to the apostles and the witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them there was great great power great boldness great charity great grace I mean can you imagine everything that they needed I mean the the, uh, the amazing thing about God folks it's not by works but we're saved by grace through faith not, not of works, least any should boast. It is the gift of God, not of ourselves. I mean, folks, we, we, we've got no bragging rights when we come before God, but we can say, look what God has done. Can you imagine David? Here he is. He, he took and, and began to swing at that stone with that sling, and he killed that giant, but he says, the Lord has delivered him into my hand. I mean, folks, he give God all the praise and all the glory. So if we acquire any great thing today, it's because of what Jesus has done in our life, and, and we're saved. We're saved by grace. We're saved through faith. We're saved. It is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> We've got our whole church doing that. Boy, we're, we're just having a time. It said, by the hands, 5 and 12, by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. You know, folks, and if, when, when we preach the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, in its power and in its purity. And we, we take off our religious glasses. You know, I was at a church and, and just a few years ago, and, and they were, uh, I, I believe, one of the greatest times I'd ever had. Heaven on earth, Brother Bill. People were shouting, and a little lady that was, uh, she was uh, 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 carrying a child. She was pregnant with a child, and, and uh, she's just leaping like a butterfly <laughs> all through the sir. I mean, it was amazing. What God was doing in the background, there's a little fellow, the, the Holy Ghost all over him, and he's laughing in the spirit and just laughing and laughing and laughing. And uh, so, I, I mean, we had one of the greatest times. What I did, though, Sister Murray, I could have went in with religious glasses, and I said, boy, these are out of order. <laughs> I could have went with them religious glasses and said, what they shouting about? How, what they laughing about? What are they rolling in the floor for, you know? But, you know, I just laid them glasses off, and I said, boy, I'm going to just have me a time. <laughs> I'm going to celebrate Jesus. I'm going to get in and have church, and I'm going to praise my Lord and my God and my King for who he is and what he has done. He saved me when I was lost. He delivered me from alcohol and drugs, and he, and he set my feet on a solid rock. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. You know, and... <laughs> If we ain't careful, we'll put religious glasses on and we'll miss all that God's doing. Folks, God's doing a mighty work. Can you imagine when God saves someone and, and, and he lifts them? The scripture talks about being lifted out of a horrible pit. Boy, I was in a horrible pit, Sister Murray. I was lost and undone without God or his son. And he reached way below the bottom for me. And, and you know, I guess at the bottom of the barrel, that's, that's where all the junk's at. That's where all the impurities wind up, I guess. But you know, folks, God loved me anyway. God seen who I was. He knew who I was. He knew what I'd done. But he said, my grace is sufficient for you. And, and times when I was weak and, and just didn't feel strong enough, he said, my grace is made perfect in weakness. And Paul said, our glory in my infirmities that the power of God and the presence of God may rest upon me. But, folks, we need to be available for the preaching and the teaching of God's Word. We need to be available for the singing of the songs of Zion. We need to be available. If no one else praises the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to praise Him. And I want to lift His name on high because He is worthy. 
of all praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. No book of Revelation, they're all going to be shouting praises unto God. But folks, I'm going to praise him down here. Hallelujah. There'll be plenty of time to praise him after a while. But folks, even in the storms of life, that little song the, the McNew sisters used to sing, when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When I've done the best I can, my friends don't understand. The storms of life are raging, stand by me. Woo! Hallelujah. Boy, we've got something to shout about today. And we've got victory in our soul because of what Jesus has done. He said, by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Acts 6 and 8 says, Stephen, full time about being available. And, and what God does, he looks over to heaven and he sees, he sees people that are busy for him.